What is up guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome to another episode of JTAG Tutorials. So in this video what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to get online with your JTAG or RGH console in 2016. I have made videos about different stealth services and offline files in the past but they're kind of getting outdated now. Some of those services don't exist anymore and um, the offline files were old offline files on an older dash but they haven't really changed very much since then. So yeah, basically this is going to be a pretty much full guide on how to get online with your JTAG or RGH console for people who are perhaps new and haven't done this before. So to get online you're going to need a few different things first of all. Now what you want to make sure is that you're using Xbox 360 Neighborhood. So you want to make sure you go ahead and get this if you don't have it. Episode 17 of JTAG Tutorial shows you how to install it. You're going to need to be using this when you're online rather than using homebrew applications like Freestyle Dash's file manager or XTX menu because those are not safe to use online. When you use homebrew applications online like XTX menu, XM360, Freestyle Dash, Aurora, any of those kind of applications, when you're using them online, it will cause you your console to get banned a lot faster. So you want to make sure you're using Xbox 360 Neighborhood to launch your games and transfer files over because that's um, undetectable. XTX menu 1.2 is debatable. Some people use that online because it's spoofs it as if you're just on the dashboard when you're using it but it's still not recommended to be using any homebrew applications when you're online so to get online you're going to need a stealth server or offline files you can choose which ones you want to use if you're going to go with offline files i personally don't really recommend these as of when i'm making this video because they don't last very long so when you get your jtag online even though you can, you're using a stealth server or offline files, you're still going to get console banned at some point. It's going to happen. Offline files, you're only going to get online for a few hours, maybe two to four hours, maybe six hours if you're lucky. You're going to get online with offline files and then you're going to get console banned. If you use a stealth server, and again, there's lots of stealth servers out there. A lot of them are made by inexperienced people who are just using leaked files those aren't going to last very long either. If you're going to go with a stealth server, I recommend you go with one of the uh, more recommended ones, the ones that have been around for a long time who know what they're doing. Somebody like Xbox Live Ninja would probably be the best bet as they do offer the best for your money. So yeah, stealth servers cost money. Offline files are free, but offline files you're going to get banned within a few hours. Whereas if you go with something like Xbox Live Ninja, yes, you have to pay a fee to use their service, but they do give you um, you know, you last like a hundred days uh, without your KV getting banned. Plus, you um, also get added in extra features such as in game bypasses for Black Ops 2, Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, as well as in game mod menus and aimbot hacks and stuff like that that you get with their service as well. That's all included with their service. So, it's up to you which one you want to go for. I would lean towards the stealth server with Ninja rather than offline files, but it is up to you. So when you do get console banned when using a stealth server, what you're going to want to go ahead and do, and by the way, I'll put a link on screen right now. You can click to skip this if you just want to learn how to install it. If you are if you already know all this stuff, there'll be a link on screen you can click to skip. But in order to, to unban yourself when you are eventually banned, you're going to need something called a key vault file or a KV. Again, these cost money as well. They're usually between seven and nine dollars, US dollars, that you can grab a key vault from. Uh, you can get, buy them from a KV seller or you can of course buy them from a website so you can get it straight away as soon as you pay. Um, so yeah, basically that is it. You can get online, use a KV to unban yourself when you get banned. Okay, so how do we get this stuff? So first of all, I will put links in the description, but um, I want this video to be more kind of future proof. So that's why I'll show you where to search as well if you need to do so if the links are broken for whatever reason. But you can head to xbl.ninja if you're going to want to buy a stealth server like uh, Xbox Live Ninja. And if you're going to be buying Xbox Live Ninja, then what you're going to want to go ahead and do is scroll down to nearer the bottom here. You've got different pricing plans that you can get for one week, two week, or four weeks, uh, depending on how long you want to be online for. They've got in-game bypasses for, you know, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 2, Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, plus uh, cheats as an aimbot mod menu lasts over 150 days apparently. So I would recommend going with them if you are going to buy a stealth server. 
uh, by time on a stealth server and to get the files you just click on downloads and you download the plugin files right here okay so if you're gonna go with offline files then the best way is just to search in Google for offline files for the current dashboard that you're on 17489 is the current dashboard from when I'm making this video and there's edge offline files edge offline files pure gamer 62 phantom live there's a bunch of different ones you can download I'm using edge offline for this example okay so how do we get a key vault now so if you want to go ahead and get a key vault um, you can use aim aim is where a lot of the modders hang out for some reason I don't know. I don't know why aim has just been taken over by Xbox modders, but um, Yeah, so if you go on aim AOL's instant messenger You can usually find lots of key vault sellers on there nice mods is a very good KV seller that I do recommend um, You can also buy them from websites like stressed is it stressed KVs stressed ebooks.com They call them ebooks just so that they don't get um, Like taken down from from Microsoft. So that's their the kind of get out of jail free card is to just call them ebooks for some reason. Not sure why that works, but anyway, you can go ahead and go to sites like this where you can get a KV checker and you can buy one or two, three or four key vaults, unshared key vaults, and that come with a CPU key for the key vault. And that's where you buy them. And once you have them, they'll come with a KV and usually a CPU key.txt file. Now, some servers are happy with you using a CPU key.txt file that just has the CPU key for the key vault in here in the text document. So some servers will be happy with that. Other servers want you to have a CPU key.bin file. So you can easily, if you only have a text file, you can easily create a CPU key.bin file by copying the CPU key from the text file, opening up a hex editor like HXD, which I'll link in the description. You just click new and then paste in the CPU key into the hex values and then you can just save that as a CPU key.bin and now you have your CPU key.bin if your stealth server requires a bin file. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is go ahead and start copying this stuff over to your hard drive. So I'll show you offline files first. Very easy to install. On Xbox 360 Neighborhood, you just want to head into your retail hard drive emulation HDD or whichever you're, the same drive you're using to store your profiles and stuff on. You want to head into there. And in here, you just want to put your CPU key and your KV file in the root of HDD1. So just in the root, not in any folders, just in the root. Then what you want to do is go ahead and take your offline files which will be a hv.bin and an xcx file and you want to copy those also into the root of your drive. And once you've done that, the last thing you need to do is edit your dash launch plugins so that you're adding the offline file plugin, the .xcx file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the space. I'm not sure why there's a space between edge and offline. That could cause an issue when you're adding it in the .ini file. So I'm just going to get rid of that space in case that causes issues and I'm going to copy the name of it so I can add it into my launch.ini file. Take your launch.ini file, you'll get this from dash launch. If you don't have dash launch installed, it's episode three of JType tutorials. When you save your dash launch settings, it saves it into a configuration file called launch.ini. You want to copy that to your desktop, open it up in notepad. And then what you want to do is where it says paths, you want to make sure you get rid of any, um, specifically the default path. You want to make sure you have nothing in the default path. You don't want to be launching any homebrew applications um, when you're online. So you want to make sure you get rid of anything that's in the default path. Then you want to scroll down until you find plugins and you want to add in your offline file plugins, which will be HDD colon backslash and then paste in the name of the XEX for the offline files. Then you want to scroll down and find something called live block. It should equal false. If it equals true, then that's wrong. You won't be able to get online if it's equaling true because it blocks the Xbox Live connection. You want to make sure it is set to false and then you shouldn't, shouldn't have any issues. You should be able to get online. So make sure that's set to false. Then just save the settings and drag and drop your launch.ini back onto the console and say yes to overwrite. And that is basically it. When we restart our console now, it should be working. The first time you restart the console, it might 
automatically restart the console again just to apply the key vault and then you should be able to get online. If it doesn't take you online straight away then you'll need to go ahead and head into the settings and test Xbox Live Connection. Once you've done that you should be able to get online. Okay so next I'll show you guys how to install a stealth server like Ninja. It's essentially the same thing. So with Xbox Live Ninja they give you their download is these files. So what you need to do, go ahead and do is open up these files, head into HDD root files for Ninja, copy the ninja.xex, drag that to your desktop, and that's all you need. You can use their .launch.ini file if you want, or you can just edit the one you have. I'm just going to edit the one I already have because I don't want to um, don't want it to like muck around with my configurations. So I'm just going to drag and drop this .xex file for Ninja into the root of my HDD1 along with the key vault and the CPU key.bin just as before then once again just extract your launch.ini to the desktop edit it and just replace this plugin with the ninja one so that's ninja.xex it is probably case sensitive so if you are using ninja just make sure the only lowercase letter is the I everything else is capitalized and then do file, save, and drag and drop that back onto your root of your hard drive. Now, the thing with Ninja that's different from other stealth servers is Ninja requires you to be using their XE build. So there's two different versions of XE build. There's the official XE build that um, the real mod scene releases, uh, and then there's Ninja's one. They release more consistently an XE build, and their one is different to the official one from real mod scene. So if you're using the one from real mod scene, then Ninja's not going to work. When you start it up, it's going to give you a, a, basically an error message that says you need to reflash your NAND with the Ninja's version of XE build. So if you get that message when you're doing this and it says you need to reflash your NAND, then it's because you're using the real mod scene version of XE build and you need to be using Ninja's version of XE build. So to get Ninja ver Ninja's version of XE build, it's in the same page that you go to download the files. To download the plugin files it's just right up above that to download their XE build and then you can follow my video on how to update the dashboard if you're not sure which I'll link on screen now and in the description you can click that link and update using follow that video but just use Ninja's XE build to update your dash kernel and then Ninja should work absolutely fine okay so now we're basically ready to um, get online with Xbox Live Ninja the only thing is when we restart the console, we haven't actually redeemed our token yet. So when we buy Ninja Time, you just get a token, a little code that you need to redeem on the console. So I'll go over to the console and show you guys how to get all of that set up and working. Okay guys, so here we are booting up the console. So what we need to basically do is just wait for this to load up. And it will say that your time has expired because we haven't redeemed our token yet. So you're just going to say OK to that message. OK, so what we need to do is we need to redeem our token. So what we do is we press the start menu. We scroll over to Ninja settings and then scroll down to Ninja token menu. Press A on that and then select redeem Ninja code. And give it a few seconds and it will give you a little text prompt to enter your Ninja token. So I'm just going to find mine and enter it in. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and entered the token. Once you've got your token entered, you just press A to finish. And Ninja redeemed seven days. And that should be it. And once it does that, what it's gonna do is essentially just restart your console to actually apply the time. And when it boots back up, providing that you're using their XE build version, then you should be able to get online no problem. Like I say, if you're using real mod scenes that will give you an error and you're going to need to of course um, reflash your NAND with XE, with uh, Ninja's XE build version. Okay and that's us fully stealthed. Now the thing that you have to bear in mind guys is that your profiles are not going to work when you create a new um, KV. Uh, okay so it's just going on about its uh, new updates. Pretty nice. Auto reload, auto switch. Interesting, no spread. Okay, so basically if you try and sign in on a profile that you haven't used on that KV, it's not gonna let you on because it thinks you're running on a different console. 
So it's going to be like, hey, we need your details. We're not going to let you sign in here. Now, if it just asks me for the password, I might be okay. But no, it's asking me for the email. I have no idea what that email is registered under. So usually you end up having to create a new account when you put KV on if you didn't note down the username and password. So that's what I'll go ahead go ahead and have to do is create profile okay and when it asks you for Xbox Live Gold you can say no thanks and it will probably offer you a 30 day trial try gold on us free for 30 days don't do that because um, you, it's gonna ask you for PayPal information or payment information because they're gonna try and monthly bill you unless you cancel it it's kind of pointless anyway because stealth servers spoof gold here we are, I'm definitely online, you can see the ads are showing up, so we've successfully connected on Xbox Live. Now, you don't need Xbox Live Gold for some games, for some games you do, it really just depends. For example, I am on a silver account, I just created this account, I said no, I don't want to do the 30 day free trial of Xbox Live Gold. But, I should still be able to create an Xbox Live party even though I'm on a silver account. And the reason for that is because Xbox Live Ninja is spoofing gold on my silver account. So it thinks that I do have gold when I actually don't. This is pretty awesome because it means you don't have to pay for gold on a lot of games. But some games you do need to pay for gold. So it's a bit of trial and error. For example, games, Treyarch Call of Duty games. So World at War, Black Ops 1, um, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. You should be able to connect to online games without needing an Xbox Live Gold trial or Xbox Live Gold. Uh, the spoofed gold will work fine for those games, but then Infinity Ward Call of Duty games such as Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, COD 4, those do need Xbox Live. You, the, spoof, the gold spoofing doesn't work properly on those games. So some games will work with gold spoofing, some won't. If they don't work, you just have to grab yourself a seven day trial. Remember that um, JTAG consoles are region free. They're, they're not region locked. So you could buy a Chinese gold trial and it would work fine on your, on your console because it's not region locked. So just bear that in mind so you can get cheap gold trials from what, any country that, that sells them for the cheapest price. You should be able to redeem them on your console without any issues. So yeah, that is basically it guys. We've successfully got on Xbox Live. Uh, using Xbox Live Ninja also showed you how to get everything set up with offline files as well Bear in mind when using offline files all you're going to get is you're going to be able to get online on your JTAG for a few hours It's not going to give you protection against in-game bans So if you get in-game console banned from a specific game like Black Ops 2 or Ghost or Advanced Warfare Then that's that's what's going to happen. You're not going to get any protection from that whereas with Something like Xbox Live Ninja, you are going to get protected. You are going to get, you're going to be able to get online on Ghosts and Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3 without getting instantly banned. And as you can see here, they also give you added in extras like the mod menu with all the aimbot options and the no spread ability and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's kind of why I lean towards stealth servers right now more than offline files. So anyway guys, that is basically it. If you enjoyed the video, you found the information useful, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, comment if you have any questions, and I will see you guys in the next video. Shuffling